Welcome to my first ever YouTube video. My name is Magnus and today I'm gonna show you how to process raw grain files so that they go from looking like this to looking like this and you can use them as overlay over video footage without the colors or the brightness being affected. Let's dive in. So here we've got the film grain. Uh, we've got 250 photos that's gonna make 10 seconds of video in 25 frames per second. I'm just gonna open up the first frame, open with Photoshop. And the first thing we need to do is that we need to make an action. It's because later on we're gonna use the action to automatically process every single file so we don't need to do the same thing over and over again. So I'm gonna make a new action folder. It's gonna be called grain actions. And then I'm gonna make a new action. It's gonna be film grain overlay. And now we are recording. So basically in my case, the picture is pretty blue might be the same for you, it might also be a different color, but in either case we need to neutralize the colors. So the best thing is to use levels. I'm going to go here to image, adjustments, and levels. So here we've got the histogram, and as you can see we have three mountains, and each one of them represents different color channel. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to each and every channel, go to red first, and we're gonna uh, adjust it so that the midpoint uh, lands on the mountain. So here, I'm gonna drag it and the midpoint is in the middle now, or the mountain is on top of the midpoint. That means that the, all the information in the picture is in the middle. That's like middle in the red channel. I'm gonna do that in the green channel as well and drag it so that the information is in the middle, like that. And the same for the blue, I'm going to drag the black point so that the midpoint is in the middle. And you can see what happens here. The picture is almost gray. It doesn't need to be perfect, but we are much closer now. So. What we're going to do now, we're going to clean up the rest. And as you can see, it's a bit uneven. Here's like a little bit yellow. Here's like more like blue magenta tone. And uh, here we've got like, yeah, it's like yellow. It's like this vignettes and like, it's just not looking very good. So what we need to do, we're going to use frequency separation. So basically we're just separating the uh, texture from the tones. And what we want to do, we're going to duplicate the layer. We're going to go to layer. Duplicate, and we're going to call this one Tones. And then we're going to duplicate it again. Layer, duplicate. I'm going to call the other one Texture. And now we've got two layers here on top of the background layer. I'm going to hide the texture layer and select Tones. And now we're going to go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. So select Gaussian Blur. So basically what we want to do is that we're going to increase the blur until all the details are gone. So as you can see now it's not very blurry. We can still see some dust here. Just going to increase it quite a bit. So it's still, you can still see some things here. Going to increase it more, more, 100, yes. I think 100 looks pretty good. I'm just gonna make it even 100. That looks good. And then I'm gonna press OK. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select the texture layer and show it again. And we're gonna put it to linear light. Linear light. Now it looks pretty nasty, but we are going to fix that. So the next step is to go to image, apply image. And here in layer, we select tones. And then we need to select blending mode, subtract. 
And here we need to make sure scale is set to two, offset is set to 128. And then press OK. So what has happened right now is that we have separated the textures from the tones. I can show you here. So here's the tones, here's the texture. Uh, just going to hide the background layer. And then now I'm only going to show the background layer. See, it looks exactly the same. I'm going to zoom in. Exactly the same. So what we want to do now is that we are going to clean up the underlying colors and the tones. You can see here it's like pretty uneven. And uh, we're going to select the tones. Then we go to edit and fill. And in fill, we select 50% gray. What's going to happen then is that the tones are going to be neutral gray. Voila. So if we zoom in, now we see it's like, it's all even, no colors, but we zoom in and then we see the beautiful grain and the dust. What we want to do now, we're just going to increase the grain a little bit. Going to select the texture, going to go to filter. Uh, sharpen, smart sharpen, and here we just want to play around with the sliders until we are happy. I think this looks pretty good. And then we can flatten the image. But there's one other problem. We've got all this dust here. And in some cases, you would actually want to have the dust because it's pretty cool to have a little bit of dust so that it looks more organic and authentic in a way. But in our case, we want to make it cleaner. And there's actually a really easy method to remove the dust. Let's go to filter. And here we go to noise, dust and scratches. So here we basically just go up on the radius until all the dust has disappeared. And now it's like it's still a little bit here. And actually, we can use the same number as we used when we did the Gaussian blur. So I'm just going to go for 100. Now it's, it's looking really good. It's all clean. And if we zoom in, see, zoomed into 100% and it's completely gray. We lost all the grain as well. So that's where the threshold comes in. So here we're just going to increase it by one at a time. Going to go to a bit more. So you basically just want to keep it as low as possible, but where you still can see the grain. So now we've got the grain here. I'm going to press OK. Voila. Going to zoom out. Yes. Got this nice and clean grain frame with the grain texture. So what you want to do now is you want to stop the action. I would also just double check if it's working properly. Just go to history, go to the first frame, then you select the action, and you press play. And then you just wait until Photoshop does its magic. It's looking pretty good. So then we close the file, don't save, and then we go to image processor. We can find that here in file, scripts, image processor. So here we can automate this process so that uh, Photoshop processes all the 250 files without us needing to do anything. So basically, I'm going to select the folder. It's here on desktop color film. So here we've got all the files and then you can do same location or you can I'm actually just gonna make a new folder. I'm gonna go here and just gonna call it processed files and then select that. So now it's going to the processed files. So then for file type, we're gonna select TIFF and uh, then run action. I'm going to go here, select 
film brain overlay action that we just made and press run. So this is going to take a while and in the meantime you can do some stretches. Okay, so now all the files are ready. As you can see, we've got all these nice gray, grainy files. So the next step, we open up uh, Premiere Pro. Just gonna make a new project. And I'm gonna call that grain scans, like that. And here we've got the empty project. And what we're gonna do, so we're gonna drag the folder into the project with the processed files. So basically we're gonna select all the files like that. We're gonna right click speed and select the duration. And here we wanna type in one. That means that every single picture is one frame. So now we're gonna make a new sequence New item, sequence, gonna go straight to the settings, gonna select 25 frames per second. I'm gonna go to frame size, it's gonna be 3840 by 2160. That's 4K. And then we're gonna call that 4K clean grain. So, now I basically just select all the files and drag them onto the timeline. So now you've got all the files, each file being one second. And if we zoom in here, it's gonna, I'm gonna zoom in 200%. It's gonna be easier to see. I'm also gonna drag this a little bit. You can see the grain changes, beautiful. And now we just need to export the clip. Just gonna go to File, Export, Media, select Video, Match Source, no audio, it's not necessary in this case. I'm also gonna select the codec. Uh, the thing is, uh, if you use uh, these uh, compressed codecs like uh, H264 or H265, um, you're gonna sacrifice quite a bit of quality because the uh, compression engine has a really hard time uh, compressing the grain. So what I would do, I would go to QuickTime here, like right QuickTime, and then get video codec and ProRes 422. That's like the go-to ProRes. I think 422 works really, really well. And then you press export. So that's it. Now we've basically got this video file, 10 seconds long with this beautiful grain. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something today. Please let me know by commenting below and like and subscribe for future videos. Peace out.